you went through on this weekend, but I just dare you within your spirit to declare that God is moving. Yes. Yes. Everybody had troubles, you had setbacks, but you can say, God is moving today. Yes, yes He is. Yes, He is. The Bible reads in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 1 through 3, At the same time, said the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus said the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore, will, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Touch three people and tell them I love them. Tell three people you love him. Anybody love him? Yes. Tell somebody you love him. You love him. You love him. I find that when we're in the house, this should be our place of refuge. This should be the place that we can come to today. And as we hear the word of the Lord today, Jeremiah is talking, and it's, um, I think, so appropriate because on this month, it's our celebration month of many things. I heard that y'all are celebrating your pastor. I think I'll try to make it for that occasion. <laughs> Amen. But um, I wanted to center around the theme of this month that God had laid on my heart. And they just happened to have the shirts printed up. And I want to talk to you today and next Sunday, part one and part two, just the subject. I love my church. Somebody shout, I love my church. I love my church. I love my church. I love my church. Why? Do you love your church? Well, we'll talk about that. But one thing we have to know is that when we know that God is moving, how many know that God is moving? Yes. yes. He's doing things that we cannot figure out. We, he's doing things that we don't understand. But I don't know about you, but have you had any prayers that's been answered lately? Yes. Any prayers been answered lately? Well, I do believe today that in the word of the Lord, we're going to find some answers to some things and some of you have been going through struggles and trials dealing with your church. First of all, let's talk about love. Let's talk about love. What is love? How do we love? Why do we love? The thing you have to know first of all is that when you begin to talk about love, you begin to think about relationship. You begin to think about companionship and who's in your life and who you want in your life. I don't care what relationship you get in, there will be trouble. Amen. You won't always feel happy. You won't feel always excited about what you're in and who you're with. But one thing about love, it takes you beyond your emotions. Because love is not what you feel. Love is actually what you do. And when we begin to hear the word of the Lord, I think that the love that we understand in this day and time is so fleeting because everybody's judging it off of what it looks like and what it feels like, but love goes beyond all of that. Has anybody ever found a piece of land and you bought that land and you built a house on that land? Right. But you will understand that over time, after you have built that house, that house then becomes a home over time. Right. Amen? Right. As you have found yourself in a church, you first found an address, and then you found a place of worship. But over time, it becomes your church. Somebody say church. Church. What is it that we have here at Greater Works? The thing that we have is more than an address. It's more than a building. It should be more than just what you feel. It should be your place that you long to be in. And I want to speak just to you on a, a gentle manner this morning because sometimes we deal with church like we deal with relationships. Right. You don't tell anybody, but you say they got one more Sunday to do this. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody? <laughs> anybody ever been there? They got one more Sunday to say this or act this way and I'm out. Well, I know you do it because you do it in your relationships. And, and that, that one more Sunday becomes another Sunday and another Sunday. Not because anything has changed, but because somebody loves their church. You don't just walk out on somebody that you love. You don't just walk away from that that you love. And the thing that you understand, love goes beyond what you are feeling. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Right. I need your attention this morning because right. when we talk about love, it gets deep. Right. Because when you understand the will of God in your life, 
The Bible tells us, and I, I'm, I'm jumping a little ahead, but it says, uh, husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. More women know that verse than the men. Wow. What, what is it about that? Because when Christ loved us, did he love us because we were beautiful? Did he love us because we had everything together? Did he love us because we were so submissive? No, he did not. Amen. But he loved us because he saw something in us. He had a bigger plan right. for us. So to, just to give you the understanding of why we love our church. I'm not just preaching to you from a pastoral point, but I have been where you are sitting in the pews wondering, is this really what I want? Right. It didn't take but a day to do that because once I committed myself, I made up a mind that I'm in this for the long haul. Amen. The thing that we understand that as our church has now become that place where not only we worship, but we fellowship, but we also have that friendship. Right. You can have fellowship with folk you don't like. Amen. Amen. I wish I'd had somebody to talk to this morning. Amen. Fellowship goes beyond just seeing you and shaking your hand, but right. it's good to have a friendship. It's good to have a brethren that when you're in the house, somebody knows when you're not there. Yes. Right. Yes. It's bad to show up somewhere where folk they don't even know you haven't been there. Come on now. I'll, I'll talk in a moment. Please. Well, when we talk about loving our church, the thing that I have to understand more and remind myself is that, first of all, love is a deep affection for or a great pleasure in. Now, in the biblical sense of love, love is never applied to things. But in our dictionary of this day and time, it can be applied to things. I only like things. I don't love that keyboard. I like it. I have no affection for it. I, this building, I like the building, but... You let the opportunity come that we can get new and better. I will be gone. Amen. Amen. I, I, I like my vehicles. I, I, I just I just don't fall in love with things. Yes. Right. So I want to preach from that essence that loving one another, persons. When we speak of love, it has to be a deep affection or a great pleasure. So it can't be de dealt toward a thing. So our church is not a thing. Our right. church is a body. Right. Yes. Right. That's how we love our church, because we are a body. Has anybody, anyone in here, have you ever neglected a part of your body? We do it often. You turn that corner and you don't have on your shoes and you didn't compensate for that big toe. And you hit that thing. And you feel it. And what happens? The thing you haven't paid attention to all day is now talking to you. Yeah. I'm here. Give me some attention. Anybody have that happen? Yeah. Like, we can, yeah. we can, we're going to step away from the big toe. Anybody ever hit that little pinky yeah. toe? Yeah. You ain't paid it no attention all week. And, you know, I, I, I'm just going to talk, but I, I, I watch my wife sometimes. If the shoe ain't going to show that toe, it don't get no polish. <laughs> y'all look at that little toe, and everything else looking good. That little pinky toe ain't getting no <laughs> But when you hit it, somebody started speaking in tongues. But what happens, we're all in the body, and when it hurts, you give it attention. Yes. Well, what happens is that when we are the church, there should be a love of the church. Ah, I'm gonna I'm so happy Preach. about this because one thing I understand about the church, when you understand the Bible calls the church the called out. When he first spoke of the church, meaning it was the called out, those that came into fellowship, those that came into worship, meaning in order for you to be called out, there has to be something that draws you out. And if, if there's nothing in your church that draws you to your church, yes. you need to check yourself. Right. Because in a relationship, there should be a yearning to be around. That's right. Yeah. I'm just trying to talk about loving our church. We got it on the t-shirts. We, we got it. And that we love our church. Love goes beyond all of the superficial stuff. Yeah. If I don't have a dime, this is my church. Yeah. If, I, if everything's falling out of my life, I can still run to the church. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's a presence that God gives the church that no other place has. I can, I can I tell you. Come on. And you, you can research the law. I know it. Do you know that because of the presence of the church, the sanctity of the church, Satan wants to break it down because if he can break it down and destroy it, 
the church will no longer have the recognition it should have. That's why if we <coughs> adjust to the standards of the world, we lose our sanctity. Yes. Uh, and I'll explain that. Do you know that in certain elements that if someone has even committed a crime and they come into the presence of the church, and I, as a pastor, am standing with them. I can surrender them to the police, but the police will respect this church. Amen. Study the law. Uh -huh. It's Amen. a place of sanctity. Because this is where we should be able to help somebody. Yeah. Yes, you have to answer for what you have done. You have to answer for your con their consequences for life. But there is a certain sanctity that the church is supposed to have. And not because it's a building, but because it's a body. Yes, uh, preach mm, now. See, y'all don't, don't, don't get it. There's no way that anybody should be able to run up in your house with your family right. and drag you out. Right. Oh, wow. If they can do that, there's something wrong. And what am I telling you is that if Satan has gotten so, we've gotten so relaxed that Satan can walk up in the church and contaminate, contaminate your spirit in the church, the church has lost his authority. I'm just really talking to y'all because the thing about it, I, I really wanted to say this for next Sunday, but I'm going to tie into it. In order to have the love for your church, the other problem we have is that we're not often connected. We operate in church like we do electronic equipment. Yes. We want to use it, we plug into it. But you know, when we want the convenience of what the church has to offer, we plug into it. But right. the church should have, because you're the body, you're one, there should always be a longing because he says, in love and kindness have I drawn thee. Yes. So even when I don't want to even press my way to be here, there's a pulling, there is a drawing. Yes. And, and, and I'm telling you how strong that connection is. See, some of y'all gonna get mad today because I'm messing up all of your sick excuses. Right, right, right. Because the thing about it that I have learned, because see, Brother Will is a living example. When he got here this morning, he couldn't even shake my hand because he was in pain. Right. And I have days that on a Friday or a Saturday, I am not feeling good. And I've gone to my wife and I said, baby, I need you to prepare to speak tomorrow because it's now midnight and church is in 11 hours. I'm not really feeling good. And she said, no, I will not. She said, because there's never been a Sunday you have been sick. Because when it's time for you to be in the presence of God's people, right. he always heals you, and she walks off. Amen. Amen. How do I fight that? Amen. And I, I'm like, okay, you said it. Now, God might mess you up in the morning. <laughs> what if I don't do better? But Sunday morning, when I put my feet on the floor, right. whatever I was dealing with, right. the body, there is oh, a yearning to see. I don't know about you, but when you want something bad enough, yeah. you press beyond your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> get to that your body is so connected that no matter what you're dealing with, somebody else is praying for yes. you, even when you didn't even ask them to Come pray on. for you. Right. Right. Tell your neighbor I'm connected to the body. <laughs> That's why I can be here when I don't feel like being right. here. That's right. why I can show up when I don't feel like showing yes. up. Because see, when I'm, uh, uh, I'm really, really, when you are connected, there are some things that happen with connected folk. Yes. When they're connected, things fall in order, things right. fall in unison. And see, when there are a body of people that are walking together, I don't know if any of you all have ever watched the Chinese army, when they are marching. I've never seen anybody march just like them. I don't even know how they move and, and, and move forward. Just the legs are so stiff, but hundreds are in unison. They're yes. all walking together. When the body is working, just because the hands is doing something up here and the feet are doing something different, they're all in unison. Yes. And there's something about a connected body that when I begin to pray, somebody else ought to sense something. Right. When you begin to suffer, I ought to hear something. Yes. And, and, and when we get to the devil loses all victory. Because yeah. now he's standing in, for, in front of Preach. a fortified body. Right. Right. Uh, see, I remember back in the day, see, we, we don't, they don't, I, at least I don't hardly see it now, but I, I remember 
when you had the, um, it was a big thing we had all the cartoons when I was growing up, all the Transformer cartoons. Yes. Because right. see, you could pick on one and you might defeat him. Mm -hmm. But if he sent out the right signal, okay. once he sent out that signal, here comes somebody else that comes in and they connect right here. Right. Here comes another one that connects right here. And before yes. you know it, there is a connected body. Right. Yes. Right. Maybe individually I was weak. Right. But when we pray together as a body, when we pray as a body, when we shout as a body, when we as a body oh, I tell oh God, help me. Somebody gonna get so mad at me today. But when the praise team is up here, we ought to be singing as a body. What's your 
your sacrifice? What's your sacrifice? Mm. Amen. What's your sacrifice? No, 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 no. I don't like to find people that can do stuff easily. When you can work with me and you do stuff that's tough, right. I know you're committed. Right. Just because you do what's convenient, that doesn't mean you are committed. Right. When you go out of the way to do when you don't want to do, right. uh, I do it all the time. My wife asked me to do certain things, and I do it with a smile. But in the back of my head, <laughs> I'm like, I got one good amen. I'm like, why didn't you do it earlier? Amen. Why, why did this and, she, and I just do it with a smile. Why? Because I love her. Amen. Now, do I really want to be doing it? No, I don't. <laughs> and I know there are times when you know, wives, we might say, well, baby, can you do a little, a little breakfast in the morning? <laughs> I don't know in this day and time what those answers will be. <laughs> I don't have those discussions in my house. <laughs> but the thing is, we're in a day and time that you got to go beyond what you feel. Amen. Because there's a payday coming. Amen. Because see, some of you can't equate to doing something unless you are paid for it. Right. How many of you like every assignment on your job? We don't want to do everything they ask of us, but we remember that there's a payday coming. There's a check on the way. But see, being in business myself and self-employed, I understand one thing and I always let my clients know that if I go down on the price, it's only because I choose to, not because I'm going to reduce the quality of my work. Right. My work stays the same at this price or this price. I just told, chose to allow you to negotiate with me. I'm not going to paint two windows and leave two undone. This is what we're showing for this month. We right. love our church. We love our church. But there should be a drawing to your church right. that folk don't always have to ring your doorbell and ask you, are you coming right. to your church? Right. Come on now. Come on now. I, heard a, I heard a brother, I've heard it said it numerous times, but um, we really get it mixed up when it comes to the church because we were called in advance two days and say, y'all pray for me because I got something coming down on me and I might not make it to church yes. on Sunday. <laughs> but we don't do that at work. Right. Some, and you, you never, does anybody, I know we, we call each other and on Saturday night, pray for me that I can press my way to church. But I've never, I've met many people and nobody has ever told me to pray that they make it to the club. Right. Come on now. Right. Right. Pray that I press my way. It's, 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 it's I'm, I'm gonna press my. I'm tired, but I'm. A, no, you you are already hyped. You know what you're going to do. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's your motivation to do what you really don't feel like doing. Am I talking to anybody? Yeah. Love yeah. gets you motivated to do the stuff that you don't want to do. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. Well, when we have love in any relationship, it calls for companionship. In your family, it's not just two people, but in any relationship, there's always a need for companionship. We have to need each other. We need somebody that can be, be there with us. Somebody, every now and then, you need somebody that will pray with you. Yeah. The church is not built up of lonely people. Right. It should not be. Right. Because if you are an island and if you have isolated yourself, yeah. you are not working as a church. Right. The church is a functioning body. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm just going to ask you this, re this, this question. Why do you love your church? Well, I asked myself, I said, first, why do I love my church? One reason I love my church is because I'm committed to my church. Yes. Right. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse 29 and 30, it says, For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth, even as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, he's committed to me. He's committed, he's committed to me. I don't care what you have done, where you have been, has God ever left you? No. He will never leave you. He even tells you that he says he's married to the backslider. Meaning when your ways don't please him and you violate the agreement, he says, I'm still with you. Yeah. But I find that when we connect with the church, 
our commitment is only according to our mood swing. Because right. right. we get attitudes and we act like we don't really wow. want to be a part of something. But when yeah. God is working through you, yeah. it's bigger than you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to help somebody Praise today. Are you, as your neighbor, are you committed to really? your church? Yeah. Now let's take it deeper. Ask your neighbor again. That's the other one because this one ain't gonna, they ain't gonna answer. This. <laughs> Are you committed to me? <laughs> See, I know that's this, that's a curveball for you because you're like, well, I love my church, but how can you love your church and you don't love me? We want to go to the church. We want to love the church. We want to be a part of the church. But we have certain folk that we click with. We don't like this one. We don't like that one. The devil is a liar. He's yeah. the author of division. Right. Meaning he loves to break you down. But when God works through you, you can love everybody. Can you do that? Can you ask your neighbor, can you really love me? Can you really love me? Now, you're there to him. You're late. <laughs> If you really understand the power of God as he works through love, that's why he gets a body of people and he calls them a church. Right. Now, if we had the obligation of picking the church, mm. it would be a mess. Mm. And then some of us would tell the truth, you wouldn't even have your kinfolk in your church. Mm. Some of us wouldn't have our spouse in our church. Wow. Everybody's quiet on it. Come on now. When we really talk about the church, who would you include in your church that you can say, I love? Right. The truth is, I'm glad God is who he is all by himself. Amen. Because when he assembles us, us together, he brings us from various backgrounds, from various cultures, from various sediments of life, whereas we are just the leftovers. Because yes. mm. see, y'all didn't hear what Jeremiah said. He said, look, those that were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Yes. That's why I like what he said because there are a few of us that have been through some things that other folk wouldn't have made it through. Amen. But he said we were left in the wilderness, but you got to rejoice wherever you are. Amen. And see, sometimes the church gets in the wilderness and we get frustrated because we, we don't feel like we are where we should be. But when God is working through you, he tells you that in the, in the wilderness you even find grace. Amen. Amen. Can you shout in your trouble? Amen. A good church is a church that no matter what's going on, we're still going to praise God. Amen. this day and time that everybody got to be pleased. God didn't save you to please you. God didn't save you to pacify you. God didn't raise you in Christianity like you raised your child. You stick the passing in your baby's mouth. God does not distribute pacifiers. One thing God wants is somebody that's going to serve him. When the door is open, I'm there because I am the body. Talking about the church, ask your neighbor, do you really love this church? Really love this church. Mm, when you come into the presence of God, there's a commitment level that is beyond anything else. I know that I'm committed to a job, but that could fold up any day. But I'm serving a God that will never quit on me, Amen. never let me down. Amen. Whether I get what I want or not, I'm still on board Amen. to love the church. Amen. Somebody say, I'm committed. Why am I committed? The second thing is I have to know in loving my church is that we have something in common. In order to be with someone, you want to have something in common. I can't understand why we connect with folk that don't have anything that we like. <laughs> Apparently there's something you like. On, just didn't realize you didn't like it as much as you thought you liked it. Yes. We have to have something in common to work Together, We have to have something in common to live together. And, and, and there's a balance that God gives us because if we're too much alike, that's not good. And, but if we're nothing alike, that's not good. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, he said, And the multitude of them that believed, that believed were of one heart and one soul. Somebody say one heart. One heart. One soul. One soul. Ah, we have so many divided hearts and minds that we can't go the same direction, but that's not really happening at this church. That's at other churches. When we walk in this church, our hearts are for the good of what God has for our lives. Amen. Our souls are depicting off of what he's already done. He saved me because not that I was worthy of it, but he called me to fulfill a purpose. And he put me in a body that as I serve with the body, we move jointly joined together. 
So being of one heart, one soul, he says, neither said of them that of the things which he possessed that it was his own, but they all had things in common. This is what you have to understand when it's in common. Somebody say common. Common. Meaning what's mine is yours. Now, they, they'll take this scripture in the Bible when in Acts they came together and everybody distributed and they will say, well, you got to bring all what you have and put it here. But that was for what they needed at that time. And actually, the disciples didn't even have to inspire that. Everybody wanted to give. When David was building, I'm sorry, when Solomon was putting together the temple, do you know that there was so much that the people had in common that they bought into the presence that Solomon had to stop somebody? He said, look, this is enough. This Y'all have given us more than enough. And, and I'm longing for the day that I can stand up here after offering and say, y'all have given too much. <laughs> I'll be the first to say it. But the thing in our day and time, it's not about your ability to give even of your finances. Some of us don't give our heart. The first thing that they had in common was their heart. Where is your heart? God doesn't want your money when your heart ain't right. right. Y'all didn't get that. Right. Some folk think it's because of their ability to give substance mm -hmm. that your heart can be any kind of way. Right. God will judge you according to your heart. Amen. Mm, I know I'm preaching better than y'all. So we think because we got a gift, a talent, a little money, this is who I am. Everybody ought to listen to me. Where is your heart? Right. Because if your heart is after the heart of God, if you are the body of God, yes. as Jesus loved the church, Come on. that means your heart is as Christ's heart. Yes. Because he loved the church when the church, when you and I did not love him, he still loved you. Preach. When we did not yield to him, he still loved you. Preach. When we disobeyed him, he still loved you. Yes. When we took from yes. him, he still loved you. Yes. But when we get in our presence here, right. do we love the way God wants us to? Right. Is our heart together? Right. Yes. We, will tell the, we will tell the pastor what I ain't going to take. Come on, man. Well, I just can't put up with this. I, God needs your heart. And when he takes your heart, he molds you the way he wants you to be. Yeah. Do you know that the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And yeah. he turns it whatever way he wants to turn it. I don't care what you're dealing with on a job, in a situation, in a courtroom. When you are part of the body, God steps in as the body. And he will turn it in the way he wants it to go. When you are in the body, when you are part yes. of the church, yes. he represents you. Yes. No matter what people say or do, right. you can stand back and say, God, I belong to you. Yes. Fix it the yes. way you yes. want it. Yes. Turn it when you want it. Yes. Right. Every now and then, God will throw obstacles at you yes. just to yes. test your heart. Yes. 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 Anybody had their heart yes. tested lately? Your spiritual blood pressure yeah. has been spiking, but God says, just trust in me. Trust right. him. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Why? Because when we have all things in common, God did not call us to be a symbol as a church of do-gooders. He didn't have us to be a symbol as a church of the well-off. The thing about it, he puts everybody in the same melting pot. And he creates one soul. Yes. Right. Well, you know, I want to go to a church that has good morals. Well, Satan has good morals when he wants to. <laughs> He's still Satan. The devil can be nice. So don't think that any of your good makes you better than anybody else. Well, I, I do. You know, the Pharisees did it all the time. They would come up into the temple. They know how to offer their prayers. And then here comes somebody else that didn't really have a prayer to give. And God counted his yes. prayer greater than those that had all the words together. Some of us walk into the place and we think we're all together, all in one piece. Look at me. And some of us, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the church, you know, across the track. I'm not talking about y'all. Some of us, when we arrive, we walk in like, I am present. All rise. Mm -hmm. Because that's where our spirit is. And really, you like, you walk in because these folk need me. Don't ever attend the church thinking that they won't make it without you. Right. Yeah. I know I'm preaching good. I know I'm preaching real good. Because if we are in this it's still my work. So if I do it for free, it still must be done as I got paid. As if I got paid. Why is that? Because when you go and show it to somebody, and 
they say, well, the top part of the window is painted and the bottom part, you ain't going to tell them, oh, he knocked $50 on, so he left that part unpainted. You're going to say, no, he didn't paint it. Y'all So what am I saying? In your commitment and your connection to the body of Christ, what do we do as we love our church? We make the necessary sacrifice because my sacrifice is valuable to me. And I'm closing. And I know y'all are like, good. But there's part two coming next Sunday. And it's going to be even good. Because as you love your church, how many know that love grows? Love grows. Love grows. Not only are you connected, not only are you committed, not only are you in a place where you have everything in common, but there should be a concern of your church. I beg to know that we are in a place that our church should be the emergency room. As a body, we are here to heal people. Yeah. Somebody say heal. Yeah. Now, it's interesting that God would select a broken people, a wounded people, a disturbed people, messed up people, and put you in one body, and he says, go forth and heal somebody. It's amazing that he does that. But what is it that he's doing in our lives? The world needs to be able to know that there's help here. There's rehabilitation here. Amen. And the church, I've always, when our church was born and conceived, the very first thing God told me, he says, your church has to be an emergency room. The church has to represent that emergency room that there's enough people that loves it that even in the emergency room at the hospital, when you come in with your injury from a car accident or whatever freak accident that could unfold, there's a staff waiting on you. Yes. Folk are coming in, are we here? You might say, well, no, I'm not the doctor, I'm not the nurse, but do you know if the janitor didn't do their job the night before? The people that you deem are least important. If the usher wasn't on time or before time at the door, do you know the first healing process that starts in a church is when someone walks in that door and the usher gives them a smile. Come on someone can look at your face and say, I just feel better already. I had no tell you. I didn't hear the singing, I didn't hear the preaching, but Pastor, as soon as I walked in the church, the smile from the ushers uplifted me. Come on now, they gave me a program and, and told me where to be seated. I felt good. I felt, because that's what happens in the church when you yes. walk into the emergency room. Somebody that will give you attention, somebody will say, come on, sit right here. Let me see what's going on. Let me take your temperature. The thing Come is, on. we don't have folk taking temperature in the church no more. Everybody just walk in and you worry about yourself. But when you get in here, I thank God so much for our team of leaders that get together at 10.50 every morning to go over the schedule of the service, to pray, because they're here taking the temperature. Yeah. What's going on? What is the need? What happened last Sunday might not happen this Sunday. But God, what is the need? Yeah. Lord, I'm on staff. I might be the one just supplying the towels, but I'm on staff. Yeah. Be there. Make me available. Come on now. Everything that's holding you back, I dare you to walk in your house today and bind it in the name of Jesus. Everything that makes me late, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Everything that holds me back from what God has called me, I bind it in the name of Jesus because I love my church. I love my church. I love my church. And when I love my church, I love my family. I love my family. When I look around, I'm blessed. And I don't brag about it, but I know I'm blessed. When I can see all of my family here. Amen. My baby girl is not here. She's in college. But to know that as the church prays for her, she's developing, doing what God has called her to do. To see how her son is taking upon the mantle of all himself to just trust God and obey Amen. God. Amen. Because we are the body. And they know your sacrifices pay off. Your sacrifices pay off. Your efforts pay off. Because the Bible says, train a child in the way that they should, they should go. When your children see you making an effort, they see you making a sacrifice, it takes away their excuses. Yeah. Well, I don't feel like doing this. Well, you can take that somewhere else. Because we don't operate on how we feel. Yeah. 
do you know that just declaring within your spirit in the name of Jesus, I'm yes. getting up, I'm going to be there, and God is going to bless your body gets healed. Yes. Yes. Healing takes place, and I don't know why God has me to talk about this, because some of us are dealing with sickness that has no cure in medication, has no cure in pills, because God hasn't allowed it, because your sickness is in your mind. There are physical ailments that you can have that generate from your <coughs> mind. Right. But as you change your thinking, right. I know I feel yeah. a pain, right. but I'm going to do what God has called me to do because yeah. I'm in the body. Yeah. And if he called the body to be healed, yeah. I must be healed. Yeah. I'm going to obey him because I'm in the body. If he calls the body to obey him, I will do what he has called me to do. Come on now. Preach. And I know we're in a day of how sanitizing and all of that, but I need you to do one thing right quick with me. Just touch somebody near you and just tell them we're in the body. We're in the body. We're in the body. We're in the body. In the body. In the body. Yeah. Now I know you might say, well, you know, I don't want to touch their hand, but um, <laughs> do you use hand sanitizer every time you touch yourself? Oh, I know you can't. We'll do it for everything else, but what about when you touch yourself? You run your hand through your hair and you grab your chicken. Because you're hungry. Ain't nobody saying this. is my germs anyway. Well, in the body of Christ, in this place, we're one body. If somebody can't touch you, you're in the wrong place. If you can't be touched, you're in the wrong place. Because God wants us to have one heart, one soul. You ought to feel my heartbeat. You ought to feel the pulse of my life. You ought to feel the pulse of my troubles. You ought to feel the pulse of my sorrows. And because you feel it, you pray for me. Get here and gauge the temperature, gauge the pressure. See what the enemy is trying to do. Somebody ought to be here early just to walk around and find everything in the parking lot. In the name of Jesus, we will be blessed today. In the name of Jesus, no enemy will camp out in the parking lot. He ain't sitting in the car. He ain't sitting out in the trailer. In the name of Jesus, everything is blessed at this place. Because we are of the church. We love our church. We love our church. Do y'all still love me? I know that's half-hearted. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I promise it's going to be better next Sunday. But I want to challenge you that if you really love him, you will do better. If you really love your church, you will represent your church. Amen? Amen.